why you should complete the census. If you've been on the internet recently, you've probably seen ads like this. I'm completing the 2020 census for my family. My response can impact how public funding is spent in my community. That could mean education for Little Man and a closer bus stop for her. Shape your future. Start here. Complete the census at 2020census.gov. And ads like those are effective at showing the financial reasons why you should complete the census. But I'm not here to talk about that. I've got another reason why you should complete the census. Your descendants. See, the census has been around for a while. We must have many facts about ourselves as a nation and as a people. The census is the machine we have jointly established for finding and publishing these facts. And what is your part in this enterprise is to cooperate with the enumerator, to answer the census questions, to make sure that your name is on that roll. That is your part in the big count. That was from the 1960s ad campaign from the census. But the census has been around even longer than that. In fact, it's in the Constitution. The actual enumeration shall be made within three years after the first meeting of the Congress of the United States and within every subsequent term of ten years in such manner as they shall, by law, direct. So we can see right from the beginning of the nation, the founders had the census planned. So from 1790 onwards, there's a census every 10 years. So this became very useful for finding your ancestors. You know that for every 10 years, as long as they're alive, you'll be able to find them somewhere. And though record keeping hasn't always been what it is now. Sometimes they spell names a little differently. But you can generally figure it out. Not every census is equal. Take a look at this 1910 census. This is lovely. This is exactly the kind of thing that you want to see. You want to see a list of names, not only of the head of the household, but also his entire family and everyone else living in the house at that time. That might seem like a given, but it's not. It also has great information about the level of education, whether they can read or write, depending on the year. There's also information about their household income, their value of real estate, where they're born, where their parents are born, whether they speak English. There's just a bunch of great information that important questions that are answered that you can then use to further your research. So why do I call this the golden window? What is the golden window of censuses? Well, approximately it's from 1950 to 1850. If you're in that golden window, you are great. You have all this lovely information. All the important stuff is there. If you get too close to the present, so after 1950, and then you run into problems of privacy. It's much easier to research dead people. Why? Because dead people don't have privacy concerns, generally. Living people generally do have privacy concerns, and so once you get to the 1950s, you're more likely to hit people who are still alive. On the other side of the golden window, once you get before the 1850s, you run into different ways of conducting the census. In the 1840s, this is the first census where you start seeing only the heads of household listed. They give you the number of people within a certain age group, number of the people in the house who are male and five and under, number of fema females in the house who are five and under, number of males in the house from six to fourteen, 
number of females in the house from 6 to 14, etc, etc. So that still can be useful, but it's dramatically less useful. That golden window is how, when you're going to have the most success when it comes to researching your ancestors with censuses. There are other ways to research your ancestors from before the 1840s, but it becomes significantly more difficult and censuses become less and less useful. So let's look at my family tree. This is my mom's side of the family tree. I'd been working on my mom's side, so I had decided that I was going to use her side of the family tree in order to demonstrate how useful the census can be when you're researching your ancestors. So the person I selected here is Marion Cox Street. As you can see, I don't currently have his parents in my family tree. I just didn't get around to looking at his particular line, and one of the main factors that contributed to me picking him was because A, I don't know who his parents are, and so that's a nice research question and starting off point, and then B, because of that golden window that I mentioned. The perfect example of this type of research and how to use the census. So I'm going to let past me take it over. I know it's in the 1910 federal census because I had found that before. So we can start there. This is FamilySearch.com. You just sign up with your email and it's free. And I prefer free. And then you can search. And you can select specific collections. I was looking for naturalization records, but now I just want to search all collections. And here we go. That's not the right one because ours was dead in 1920. So now we can get more specific so we can look at all the 13,147 Marion streets in the 2000s, or we can reduce it down to the 1900s. And even more specifically, the 1910s, because we know he's in that particular census, and then we can also know that he was living in Pennsylvania at this time. And so we can ignore all of these ones that say New York and Ohio, and so we can just say residence place, the United States, and scroll down to Pennsylvania. His wife is Louisa Barbara Street. You always put the main name for the women here. He is Marion Street. And I always like to open in a new tab, because just in case you don't want to lose all your lovely search results. So you can find out all this information. Where he was living, Lower Chancellorford, Pennsylvania. If you don't know birth years, this is a great place to start because they estimate it. They estimate it based on his current age, so when the census was taken, he was 56, so they estimate his age based on that. It's generally correct, plus or minus. Cursive handwriting, and archaic cursive handwriting at that than I am, then you don't have to do this, but I often have to just double check that I know who the heck I'm looking at. So these are the growths. We've got lots of growths. We've got Kilgore, Kimmins, another Kilgore. Kincaids, where the crap, Camerons, Ewigs, and Streets. There we go. Marion Street. He is the head of the house. And he's got an eight and an eight. Let's see, what's this thing mean? How many children? Number born and number now living. Excellent. So he's got eight kids and eight of them are living. That's a, that's 
Good for you. Okay, so then you can scroll further. See, what's this? Everybody speaks English. Big surprise there. Oh, occupation. Industry. Employed. Education. Wow, we're getting really specific here. Anyways. I'm used to looking at older censuses. Is the thing. Can we figure out what that says? Farmer? That probably says farmer. This says laborer. Something G. Not a farmer. Which is interesting. But I can't read that. Because one, it's old timey. And two, it's super faded. Well, that looks like... A, that says farmer. And that looks like the other thing. So maybe it's just a weird F. Maybe he is a farmer. Sparse. Farmer. I don't know. Difficult. But they're all educated, so that's nice. Educated and... What's the... Oh, he can read? Is that what this column is? Owned or rented. Oh, he's renting. Okay, so he's renting. So that's what we know. Oh, it's already attached. Cool. So now we can go back. And go back... Ten years. And see if we can find him again. Mm, let's go back. And you can add in a spouse. If I add in Louisa, how does that do us? Oh, he's living in Maryland. So he moved from Maryland to Pennsylvania. So this is something that you can know just by looking at censuses. So the streets. Oh, look at this gorgeous handwriting. Read everything. Excellent. Okay, Maryland, Maryland, Maryland. Farmer. Big shocker. <laughs> Farmer. That's a clear one, too. Months not employed. Ooh. It's not good. Yes, yes, yes. Can read, read, read. One, three, three, two. What's number of farm schedule? Owned or rented? Owned, free or mortgaged, and then farm or a home. Let's go down to farmer. See, so he has a whole paid off farm. See. Just backing it up. Oh, maybe they skipped that year. Did they skip that year? Oh, a fire destroyed much of the 1890 census records. Okay, never mind. That makes sense. 1880s it is. Weird way of spelling Louisa, but that seems about right. LMA. Yep. He's a laborer. You can see they changed his birth year again. Check number of months this person has been unemployed. Oof. Ouch. He keeps being unemployed, you poor thing. Ooh. Interesting. Okay. 1870. When was his first kid born? Ah! Okay. 1870. He wasn't with his wife. Okay, so he's living with the Calders. Ooh, we get to fill this in. Next year, we should be with his parents. Okay, looky there. Marion Street, 1851. He's a boy. I think he's a girl. See? Okay. Yeah, whatever. You're just incorrect. He's a dude. Ta-da! And we have his parents! And we have his parents! John! Wait. Why? Okay. We'll see, we'll see. We'll go back another year. Well, I guess then...
Here we go. So we were able to find his parents. John and Martha Ann Street. There was a little detour in there, Father, but I ended up figuring it out. Marion Cox Street is a struggling laborer who keeps being out of work. He later raises himself up and is able to completely own his farm without paying on any mortgage, but it just shows how much people struggle and how much every generation has to stand on their own. So we can learn from Marion Cox Street not only that you should fill out the census because your descendants will thank you, but also that everybody gets down on their luck. Just because you're unemployed this census doesn't mean that next census you won't have a house beautifully paid off that's all your own. So let me know, have you ever looked at a census? Have you filled out this year's census? I, I know my fiance filled out the census for us, so make sure you go fill out the census and let me know your tips for researching your family tree using the census. Thanks for watching.